Welcome. Welcome to a celebration of life for Linda Thomas. Today we're going to have a wonderful meeting of the hearts and minds and energies with song, prayer, sharing, laughter. And we're going to start it out with a good old standard that Linda loved for us to share with her. An Etta James tune.
Yes, please applaud. Linda loved music. We're here to celebrate Linda, right? That's right. So in the celebration, we're going to hear music. We're going to feel joy. We're going to feel the deep love that we all shared because of Linda. That's what we're here to do. And we'll feel the grief together. We weave them together. The love, the grief, the joy, the celebration. For Linda lives on in each of us through this experience, through us sharing how she touched our lives, through the music, through the colors. Look at all the colors. Look at all the beauty. That's when you know how many lives a life has touched. Look around at each other here. Even if you don't know each other, you're connected because of Linda. I want you to feel that presence. You're sitting here today at New Thought Unity Center, a place that she called spiritual home for many years. And so just by sitting here, you're sharing in something that Linda loved. So breathe that in as we celebrate together today. And we feel the sadness and the grief and the love and the joy and the celebration all as one. I, for one, want to carry on Linda throughout my life, through the music, through the remembering. And she lives on. And I hope you feel that presence too, today and beyond. So let's take a moment and breathe in as we go into prayer. Father, Mother, God, we are so grateful for the life of Linda Thomas and for her spirit that lives on eternally. Her spirit that lives on eternally in us, through us, through the music, through our hearts, and through her presence that we can feel in everything that we are experiencing here today and beyond. May we find comfort in each other and in the love that is shared in the days and weeks and months that pass. When we need each other, we remember Linda's presence in the love and we connect through our hearts and into that Christ presence in each of us. And we thank you. We thank you for Linda's life, and we thank you for your presence. And so it is. Amen. You're probably wondering who I am, right? <laughs> who is this girl with the purple and blue hair? Who is she? <laughs> My name is Kim Ballou. And I am a musician and a spiritual leader here at New Thought Unity Center, um, but have known these musicians and Linda Thomas for many years. When I would travel around, um, many of you probably know this because she loved the arts, right? And she would travel to see me perform. She would travel to see all of us. I think she showed up at every opening of David's shows at Ensemble. Is that right? That's absolutely correct. Yeah. And so, um, what an honor for me to be able to stand here and be a part of the celebration of Linda. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I want to share a reading with you from Mahatma Gandhi. For I can see that in the midst of death, life persists. In the midst of untruth, truth persists. In the midst of darkness, light persist. Hence, I gather that God is life, truth, light. He is love. He is the supreme good, Mahatma Gandhi. And so we remember that presence. Linda's presence is that which is flowing through all of us now. And I'm looking forward to celebrating her in grand style with music and words and everyone getting to share their love and experience for Linda. And now is a time when we can share in a song that Linda loved, um, that David Kaiser wrote, um, and many of you will know it. Any, anyone who's been at New Thought Unity Center at least once will know the song. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah, and if you choose to, let's stand and sing it together. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Tell every child, woman and man, only love can. Only love can. Hate cannot drive out hate. Tell every child, woman and man, only love can. Only love can. We must be, we must be the change we wish to see in the world. Take a stand, take my hand, show that love can. We must be the change we wish to see in the world. Take a stand, take my hand, show that Cannot. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Tell every child, woman and man, only love can. Only love can. Only love can. Only love can. Hate cannot drive out hate. Tell every child, woman and man, only love can. Linda knew the secret of life, pure joy, and living life to the fullest. The secret of life is enjoying the passage of time. Since we are on our way down, we might as well enjoy the ride. The secret of love is in opening up your heart. It's okay to feel afraid. Don't let that stand in your way. Cause anyone knows love is the only road and since we're only here for a while might as well show some style hey give us that smile isn't it a lovely ride we'll be sliding down gliding down Try not to try too hard, it's just a lovely ride. Now the thing about time is time isn't really real. It's just your point of view. Oh, 
Einstein said he could never understand it all. Planets are spinning through space. The smile upon your face. Well, welcome to the human race. Isn't it a lovely ride? I'll be sliding down, gliding down. Try not to try to walk. It's just a lovely ride. Some kind of lovely ride. I'll be sliding down, gliding down. Try not to try too hard. It's just a lovely ride. The secret of life is enjoying the passage of Thank you. At this time, I want to invite Jeff Thomas up to read Linda's eulogy. Thanks, Kim. Just to be clear, I'm not the ex-husband. I'm the caterer. A couple, there's actually several of us in sound, and uh, the Q102 DJ in the morning, his, his stage name is Jeff Thomas, a couple months ago. He, they were talking about people with the same last name. He said, uh, and he's a real foodie. He said, yeah, I call up and get a reservation for a restaurant, and they think I'm the iconic caterer, and I get a really good table. <laughs> <laughs> My introduction to our beloved Linda Thomas was in 1987 when I just started my catering company and I was the poor Jeff Thomas. And my best gal friend from high school worked in the accounting department at Landrum and Brown, um, of which uh, Barry's father was uh, the big dog there. And it was this opulent display of cocktail shrimp and an ice carving at the top of the Bankers Club and it was a really great party. Um, I kind of like, I, I just, I, Amaze some people like, are you Jeff Thomas? No, no, I'm the poor one. Uh, I finally made it my way over to Linda to meet her for the first time in my life. I'll ever, never, ever forget it. And she reminded me all the time that she knew from the first sentence I said to her that I was gay. Because I, I used the F word. I said, your earrings are fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we became fast friends ever since then. And I watched Linda really blossom and grow through her career um, for a, a, a while. Some of you may know that she had a florist uh, shop up in Blue Ash called uh, uh, Bloomers. And we were asked to do uh, a dramatic table setting uh, for the Flower and Garden show years ago at Alt Park. So we, our, our theme was lunch on Mykonos, and we come bounding in to set up our table an hour before judging. I, and, and the volunteers are like, we were afraid you weren't gonna show up. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is a lot of work because people started last night getting their tables together. I looked in and said, I can do a, set a party for 500 in two hours. I'm pretty sure I can set a table for one in, in an hour. And I don't remember, we got either gold or silver, but I kind of pissed some people off that we came in an hour and did so well. In fact, I, I had bought the, the vase the flowers were in at some uh, secondhand shop for 10 bucks and they, one of the judges wanted to buy it, so I charged them 30. <laughs> <laughs> Just for giggles. Um, so um, after, after the Flower and Garden show, uh, uh, Linda went on to be on the list of so many uh, wonderful community charity organizations and, and uh, so many great causes that I feel like we really need to announce what those were. She was heavily involved in AIDS Volunteers of Cincinnati, uh, People Working co Cooperatively, the Parks Foundation, Woman of the Year, uh, Cincinnati Film Commission, Playhouse in the Park, Kinderville, uh, Ensemble Theater, and of course, she had to get involved with Cincinnati Association for the Blind. Um, during 
that, that time and the work that she was doing, um, one of the fun memories I have is uh, it was a gala for the Film Commission, and we were asked to do uh, a, another dramatic table setting based around a, a famous film. We chose Annie Mame, and of course, uh, Linda came as Annie Mame, and I came as Ido. Um, our tablescape was uh, an ice carving of a Buddha filled with caviar. As, as she, uh, when Patrick said, "What is this?" and she called it fishberry jam, so <laughs> that one was a lot of fun. Um, then Linda started to lose her eyesight, and I first noticed it. We had gone to Rome for a long weekend, um, and she would go to get out of the taxi, and, and she was overly cautious that she uh, didn't miss anything uh, and leave it behind. That said, she did have enough eyesight to buy a pretty spectacular full-length black patent leather raincoat in, in Rome. Um, with, with what she was facing, Linda always looked at the glass half full. You know, we all have our bad days. But, you know, we would discuss uh, that she would much rather lose her eyesight instead of her hearing. I don't know how many you go way back, but if she left you a message, you better have a half hour carved out because she loved to talk. <laughs> and, and it would have been much more difficult for her to not have that in, in her life. Um, with her, uh, uh, with her, also with her, her disability and becoming it was the year before she, be, she received the Woman of the Year, and I was escorting her to the annual uh, banquet at the Hyatt. She walks into the ballroom and tips, barely touches a, 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 a tray of ice water. There were like 50 of them on it. She didn't turn it over, nothing happened, but she started like, like going, feeling sorry for herself and how, how hard it is and blah, blah, blah. It wasn't 10 seconds later. Some woman with her total eyesight, as far as I know, walked in and totally flipped an entire six-foot table. And I said, see, Linda? It doesn't have to always be about your eyesight. Um, we also many, had many discussions about how fortunate she was, um, and, and with that glass half full, that financially she didn't have to suffer. You know, there are lots of people in the world that could have had the same thing and she looked again at that glass half full that kept her going and her spirits up. Um, the last time we were with Linda, her eyesight had gotten so bad that she said, I was gonna bring dinner and she said, Jeff, I can only eat food with my hands. Then the pandemic hit and it was the last time I saw her because she was so compromised, but she still kept the spirit she went on dialysis for years, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and you knew not to call her because she was on dialysis for four hours. And then she was so wiped out after that, you just left her alone. But we'd giggle and say, that's Linda's job, being on the dialysis. Um, Barry asked me about this portrait, whether we should do something younger, something that didn't show the the disability of her blindness. I said, absolutely not. This is who she was. This shows you with her infectious smile that she always had exactly that she took her life to the positive amount that she could possibly give anyone. The last years, many of you may know that both Mike and Barry shared taking care of her 24-7. And my heart goes out to both of them, but I have to say, Barry, you not only lost your mother, you lost your best friend, and we all know that, and we're all here for you, and we're praying and giving all of our good thoughts to you, now and forever. Thank you, um, Jeff, and just know that with, we had laughter and tears in that, and that's Linda living on. So thank you so much for sharing. And she lives on in all the music. And she specifically asked for us to share music today. And so we want to honor that she loved music and she loved celebrating life at every stage as we just heard. No matter what was happening, she figured out a way to find a way to celebrate. And so we want to celebrate with music now. All right. 
you want to do this one or this is get the plug. All right. Mark, team, good friends of Linda. Right now we're duo blessing. Mark O'Keefe, Gene Blessing. I met Linda through Mark. And I must say, it was love at first sight. She welcomed everyone with her infectious, fabulous, hostess with the mostess personality. And I was very impressed every time we would be invited to a party at her colorful home. I have never seen so much colorful artwork in one person's home. Just awesome. The one memory that is going to relate to this first song we're sharing is Linda loved to hear about my family and Mark's family. She loved his mother, Ruth O'Keefe, and she was so good at remembering names and people and who you were associated with. I had eight other brothers and sisters. She knew every single name of my brothers and sisters, and she always inquired, how are they? What is Patty doing? Is Jill and Pam still in the theater? Is this, I mean, I was like, how, ma how many conversations? We didn't have that many, but she remembered. And she brought that personal touch to our friendship. And it meant so much to me. And when I was going through the grieving of my parents, she also had just lost her mother. And there was such a nurturing to our friendship and how she really wanted to talk heart to heart with me. Uh, a few times we went to lunch, just the two of us. Um, I did try to do the Tuesdays or Thursdays phone call, right, later on, but it was definitely pure joy and living life to the fullest with her firework parties and our band. She had, we played, she had that four-story home. We played on the very fourth floor, <laughs> our band of five or whatever. Uh, but she loved doing that, or she would have Mark and I come sing down with her grand piano. Loving music, loving life, and being a very nurturing soul to me. So we wrote, Mark and I wrote this song, it's an original. David Kaiser actually asked us to write the song for Mother's Day uh, service here at New Thought Unity. And I thought, oh wow, I think I can write a song, sure about my mom, so we did. And Linda, it was a favorite of hers. She loved it. So we're sharing this, it's called Gift of Life. One of the things that she said when she told me that she wanted us to play this is she said, one of the greatest honors in my life was to have been a mother. began with the gift of life given to the women of this earth. They embrace this gift with courage and faith. And now it's time for us to give thanks. When I was young and fed my mom would hold me and whisper my name. I could feel her heart beat slow and strong. And I knew nothing would go wrong. Can you imagine what life would be without the tender arms embracing humanity? joy, there would be no faith, there would be no life with eternal grace without the loving hearts of our mothers. When I was 16 and knew everything, I always doubted the wisdom 
wisdom of my mother, but she persevered through the trials and tears, and she stood by me through all those years. Now I am grown with a child of my own, and I am asking advice from my mother. Darling, you've known all along. Can you imagine what life would be without the tender arms embracing humanity? There would be no joy, there would be no faith, there would be no life with eternal grace without the loving hearts of our mother. Time for all to share All our love and kindness For it is an honor A part of God's plan To use our nurturing hearts Toward our fellow man Can you imagine What life would be Without the tender Embracing humanity, there would be no joy, no faith, no life with eternal grace without the loving hearts of our mothers. Thanks, Linda. I got to meet Linda through uh, a group of friends that I met through the Life Success Organization, which was a, a life-changing, improving thing for me. And <clears throat> one of the things that Linda and I shared was a love of the Beatles. And she always told me the story that, you know, he married the wrong Linda. <laughs> I said, really, who? Paul McCartney, of course, he was supposed to marry me. <laughs> so um, Barry and Jeannie and I got together, and this was one of Linda's favorite songs, which <clears throat> Paul didn't write, but he sings beautifully on Ed Sullivan. And to tag on to that, a little history of Linda. So she, was, she loved theater, right? She was a board member of every theater around Cincinnati at the time. She was in theater way back in the day, and she was in this musical production called The Music Man. Well, this song is from that production that the Beatles took and made their own. So we thought this would be appropriate for Miss Stage Performer herself. Ready? There were bells on a hill, but I never heard them ringing. No, I never heard them at all till there was you. There were birds in the sky, but I never saw them winging. No, I never saw them at all. Till there was you Then there was music And wonderful roses They tell me in sweet Fragrant meadows of dew And dawn There was love all around But I never heard it singing I never heard it at all till there was you. They 
tell me in sweet fragrant meadows of dew and dawn there was love all around but I never heard it singing no I never heard it at all till there was you very much. So we've gotten to share a little bit about our wonderful relationship with Linda and now is the time where we would invite anyone here that's celebrating Linda's wonderful life to just come up to the bottom stairs. We'll have a microphone here. Alice will share with you. But we'd love for you to just share a little moment in time. If you want to share from where you are, put your hand up. I'm Raylene Siebert, and the first Sunday I came to this church at the invitation of Terry Armstrong, who's back in the booth, I met Linda. And a group said, we're going to go to lunch. How about coming with us? And so I went with them. And actually, Jeannie was in a play. And so we all had lunch, and we went to see Jeannie. And that's the first time I met Mark and Jeannie also. And because I live fairly close, I lived in Fort Thomas, and Linda was, I'd have to pass to get to her house. I became a chauffeur for her, and I was raised in Kentucky, and then spent 10 years away from here. And whenever we'd go somewhere, Linda would be my guide, and she'd say, okay, this is how you go. You go to this way and that way. The blind woman was always telling the driver where to go and how to get there. <laughs> and she was so good at that kind of stuff, too. And we shared so many wonderful experiences traveling together and, and meeting other people and sharing at her, her house, lots of parties and things. But I had the pleasure on the last trip we actually took together to take Linda to her home in Greenville, uh, Pennsylvania for her 50th class reunion. And so she wanted to show me where she grew up and everything there. And, so we got there on Friday night and met with a bunch of her friends. And Saturday morning, she said, I'm going to show you where I grew up. And so she had already sold the house. Her mother had died. And she walked up and knocked on the door. And the man came to the door. And she said, hi, I'm Linda Thomas. I sold you this house. Can I show my friend through? <laughs> and he said, sure. <laughs> and so Linda was always very brave. She knew what she wanted to do. And most of the time, we got to do it. So that was one of the things that I wanted to share. There are so many. It would, I could stand here for an hour and go over things we did, but there's a lot of other people that are ready. So. Did you want to talk as well? I see you standing. Yeah, Alice will. She's bringing you a microphone. Just give her a minute. I don't need it. You don't. <laughs> well, other people's hearing might not be as in tune. <laughs> and for the recording. Linda lived in Sycamore Trace. She was the jewel of Sycamore Trace. Oh, of course, yes. We had more parties <laughs> at Linda's. But one of the things that I remember about Linda, any time my kids came home from school, I need to go see Linda Thomas. <laughs> no, they called her Mrs. Thomas. Oh, why do you need to go to Mrs. Thomas's? I have something to sell. <laughs> any time the kids at school had a something to sell, Linda supported the kids of the neighborhood. <laughs> they, I talked to my uh, daughter the other day about coming to uh, Linda's uh, uh, service, 
and um, they were quite memorable of Linda buying everything they did for the kids. Very supportive. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I remember, <laughs> the kids were taught it was time for a car. They wanted a car like Jeff's <laughs> or Barry's. <laughs> they always knew when Barry was home. <laughs> he, they were not the same age. But they knew Barry. <laughs> I'll hear. All right, who else would like to share? Anyone else? Well, come on, somebody who got stories. You got stories. Linda would love to hear <laughs> what you saw. What you saw, what you remember. Here we go. Just one thing I want to say. And Jeannie, when you said that Linda knew everybody in your family, she knew everybody in my family. Not only that, but she remembered my grandchildren's name better than me. <laughs> she would tell me, she would say, oh, that's Chris's daughter, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I would forget. It was always a, a happy, happy thing just to be with her. Oh, yeah, definitely. I can say no more. Linda was a dear friend of mine. I met her through an organization called Life Success, and we just became fast friends going out to lunch from Unity. And we were part of a book group that didn't read a book. <laughs> <laughs> but it was our, our, it was a Tuesday night, wasn't it Tuesday night book group? But we were too busy socializing to 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> We'd pick out books, but we never got to them. <laughs> but she was a great friend who would do anything for you. I loved her dearly, and she would be missed. Hello, my name is Anne. Um, Mrs. Thomas, or Linda, was my um, employer for probably six years, but also my friend. I worked for her at Bloomers from 1984 to 1992. Um, those of you who know her probably know that there's two types of time in this world. There's the real time and then there's Linda time. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we all knew that we had to be on time, but she would tell us things and it would be an hour later, <laughs> two hours later. Um, as a young girl, I worked for her during high school, the end of high school, and all through my college days. And those are times when you don't always get along with your own mother. And she was very much my confidant, my other mother. Yeah. And she always made an effort. I, I was going to Miami University. My dad had me hoodwinked into thinking I was growing up poor. But Mrs. Thomas always gave me her secondhand clothes, her sweaters, her beautiful sweaters. I went back to school always decked out, and people would be like, where do you get those cashmere, beautiful, gorgeous sweaters? And it was my secret. Um, she always made it a point to include me, and she listened to my issues and didn't judge me. I think she loved having a son, but I think she liked having a semi-adoptive daughter. Um, and she never judged me like my own mother. Um, I came to her one day with the very important information that I was a senior in college and I was about to become a mother and she was one of the first people I told because I knew she wouldn't judge me and she'd be there and gave me very good advice and supported me along the way. She's greatly missed. I have a fun memory that Mark will share with me. Um, so I was always so inspired by Linda's fabulousness, right? And 
as classy as she was, there was still kind of a nice, centered, grounded person. However, there were times where her glamour didn't serve her well. Remember when you went on the Little Miami? Yeah. <laughs> no, it was, there was a group of us that, yeah, we went to uh, the New River in West Virginia. Hold, you remember that, Nance? You guys were there. Paula, were you with us on that? Okay. Um, anyways, the whole gang of us, we um, drove all the way down to New River in West Virginia. Now, you know, Linda is a glamour queen. And so we're, it, you're, you're going to go white water rafting. Anybody here been white water rafting before? You know you're going to get wet. <laughs> so we're, <laughs> it's the next morning we're getting ready to go in, in, the, in the bus and we're on our way there and I'm sitting next to Linda and she reaches in her purse and pulls out her eyeliner <laughs> and she's putting her eyeliner on. It, it, but man, whatever that stuff is. That, <laughs> That you know, for the eyelashes thing, and she's doing that. And I said, Linda, you know where we're going. Well, I still want to look good. <laughs> I said, You're going to get soaking wet. And he said, I don't care. I'm just going to have a good time. And then we went. And Manson, do you remember this? And when we went to Florida, there was a group of us. We went down there twice to her condo in Florida, and we had so there was like five or six of us. And I, oh my God, we must have laughed. The whole time, I, for her birthday, we, that was for her birthday, that one. We laughed hysterically for hours and hours <laughs> to the point where people were crying, and we, we got drunk one night. <laughs> and so they, they started to decide that everyone was going to paint their toenails. And I said, no way. I am not going to paint my toenails. Forget it. They held me down, and we're all <laughs> drunk, and they held me down, and they painted my toenails. So we got a picture of what five or six of us in the circle with all the same blue toenails polished. And it, it was just, that's the kind of fun. She, I mean, you, Linda knew all the, the elites and the uppity uppies, but my mother was, she lived her life, sadly, uh, it's kind of like a hurt puppy. She was afraid of everybody and the biggest heart. And I took m mom to Linda's place over Mount Adams for uh, a party. Oh, I don't want to go in with all these rich people. And mom. So Linda sensed that, and we, we got, got her in there and introduced her to everything. And Linda just spent, she must have spent at least half the party just sitting there talking to my mom, hugging her, taking her around, making her feel welcome. That's right. So she, she just had such a great balance of woman of the year, right? And then she could just sit with one person one-on-one -on -one and, and feel non-judgmental about what you were sharing with her. So, even though, even, even though it was on Linda's time, but, <laughs> but no, really, you know, it was still that strong sense of wholeness. Yeah, anybody else wanna share? There we go. Well, I was lucky enough that uh, Linda and I were really close friends, and I enjoyed all of her spirit and all of her fun. And some of the fun, um, we were in her convertible, driving to go out one night to an event. And uh, we're driving down, and we went under an, un an overpass, and a bird right on my head. Okay, so I'm sitting there, just this stuff dripping down. And I said to Linda, what am I gonna do? And she said, don't worry, we'll take care of it. And we pulled over and just went like this, and I went to the party. <laughs> I mean, it, that was just, she was just that kind of person. Um, and another time, we were out, um, and we were down in Florida at her place, and we went out for dinner, and she, um, well, there was a man that came over and said, Miss Close, may I have your autograph? <laughs> and she, after the guy left, she signed it because she misspelled Glenn. <laughs> so, I, <laughs> she only put one in. so I think he probably knew later, but she had told 
there were like five of us around the table, and she said, see, I told you I look like Glenn Close. <laughs> <laughs> so she was just the kind of friend that you had fun with, you could bear your soul with. Um, and uh, she showed her love of, of her son, Barry, and, and uh, I'm so thankful that um, I got to know Barry, too, and Mike through her harder times also. But she was a, a wonderful force, and I'm lucky to have known her. I shared this with Barry earlier, but I think it's important for everybody to know because it's about her love for Barry. Um, one of the things that Linda and I would do as an annual pilgrimage was the ode to Barry. Oh. <laughs> and that was Christmas. Linda loved Christmas. She loved Christmas for her friends, but most of all, she loved it to express her love for her son. And we would go around town and she would have so carefully thought of specific things that meant something to Barry. We went to um, a specific florist where his friend worked to get flowers that he loved. We would go to a specific tea shop that he liked to get tea that he loved. They weren't humongous gifts but they were things that she knew that were very, very special to him. And in the care that she took for that, I saw the real bond between the two of them. And it meant so much that she let me share that experience. Barry, she loved you. And for those who maybe don't want to come up here and share when we're finished and we're sharing food downstairs, you can share these memories and continue this legacy moving forward. Um, for me, it's just so beautiful to hear the stories and how many lives were touched by Linda, by the joy that she brought to her life and then infected everyone around her. So amazing. So I'm just going to read this poem, and then we're going to share some more music, and then we can share together downstairs. It's called The Ship. I am standing by the seashore. A ship at my side spreads her white sails to the morning breeze and starts for the blue ocean. She is an object of beauty and strength, and I stand and watch until at last she hangs like a peck of white cloud just where the sun and sky come down to mingle with each other. Then someone at my side says, there she goes. Gone where? Gone from my sight, that is all. She is just as large and mast and hull and spar as she was when she left my side. And just as able to bear her load of living freight to the places of destination. Her diminished size is in me, not in her. And just at that moment, when someone at my side says, there she goes, there are other eyes watching her coming and other voices ready to take up the glad shout, here she comes. With that, I'll share some music. Yeah. 
said to fully surrender Cause the song I knew before Was dramatic and amazing I had memorized the score seem out of key melody of my soul came to me I didn't try to fight it I let the new song in Notes rising from my cells, pouring through my skin. So I thank the song before and released it through the door. Here I stand as I tremble. The first note is. Where I'll start as I share this new song of my the song and melody of our soul. Let's hear that song everywhere we go. <laughs> yeah. And thank you, David Kaiser and Mark and Gene. And David's going to share a song now. Sure. Yeah. Um, I saw Linda a lot here at um, New Thought Unity Center. But uh, as was mentioned before, I saw her every night uh, that there was an opening of my musical plays down at Ensemble Theater of Cincinnati. And uh, she was always there. Uh, long after she couldn't see, um, she would be there and, and listen. And uh, so I'd like to share a song. If there was one song that I would play, uh, somebody said, all the songs that you wrote which one? It, this would be it, and I think it fits today, because Linda was such an adventurer, so full of life, so unafraid of life, um, all the way through. So this is called Bend, Willow, Bend. Bend, Willow, Bend till your branches touch the ground. Fly, snowbird, fly, till a warmer home is found. Turn, seasons turn, burn, wildfire burn, and take me with you as you go. There's so much I don't know. 
There's a lot I want to learn. Dance this old dance in the rustling of the breeze. Flow, river, flow till your waters kiss the seas. Die, sunset, die. Rise, half moon, rise. And take me with you as you go. There's so much. I don't know. Oh, there's a lot I want to try. From the earth to the stars, all the dreams you are. As you rise to fall, teach me. I'm not afraid of death Having lived my life Till there's no living left And like my weeping friend Grow to touch my roots again So bend Willow Bend. Wow, thank you, David. Yeah. And uh, so I think Barry wants to share a few words with you as we close. I actually just wanted to say thank you, for everybody, for, for coming and invite everybody downstairs after for some wonderful food from Jeff Thomas. So, yes, thank you very much for being here. Yes. Love you, Barry. Yes, thank you. And share your laughter and share your teal, tears, teals, <laughs> your tears uh, downstairs as well. And, and uh, really celebrate Linda in all of it. You don't have to hold any of it back and keep her alive. And we're going to share, of course, we've got to share another Beatles song yeah. because, you know, she is Paul McCartney's <laughs> long-lost wife, and so we need to honor her. And we're going to imagine, well, we kind of see the sun coming through there, and this is this celebration of Linda with this song. You can sing with us.
like years since it's been clear Here comes the sun Here comes the sun And I say it's alright It's alright sun Here comes the sun And I say it's alright So thank you all for being here. I know Barry and, and everyone who love Linda are so grateful that you're here. And we invite you to a reception downstairs where you're gonna have some amazing food from Jeff. So thank you. Let's share our memories, our love, our joy downstairs. Thank you. What's that? Let's have a round of applause for Linda. Come on in her life. Yeah, and you can stand up, love each other with the same energy that Linda loved life and loved everyone, share that energy. Thank you.